Hey there, welcome back to Simply Learn. Today we are diving into the world of cybersecurity to explore two fundamental concepts, hashing and encryption. Have you ever wondered how your passwords are stored securely or how data is kept confidential during transmission? Well, today's video is for you. We will be comparing hashing and encryption, breaking down the differences and discussing their respective use cases. But before we dive in, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated. And just a quick info for you, if you want to upskill yourself, master cybersecurity skills and land your dream job or grow in your career, then you must explore Simply Learn's cohort of various cybersecurity programs. Simply Learn offers various certification and postgraduate programs in collaboration with some of the world's leading universities like MIT, IIT Kanpur, EC Council and many more. Through our courses, you will gain knowledge and work-ready expertise in skills like advanced hacking concepts, network packet analysis, ethical hacking, network security, and over a dozen others. And that's not all. You also get the opportunity to work on multiple projects and learn from industry experts working in top-tier product and security companies and academicians from top universities. After completing these courses, thousands of learners have transitioned into a cybersecurity role as a fresher or move on to a higher paying job and profile. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and description box to find a cybersecurity program that fits your experience and areas of interest. And now, moving to our topic, and first we'll start with what is hashing. So first up, let's talk about hashing. And hashing is a process that takes input data and produces a fixed size string of characters, which is typically a hash value. This process is one way, meaning you can't reverse it to obtain the original data. The key here is the same input will always produce the same hash. But even a small change in the input will result in a completely different hash. So this is hashing. And now we'll see the use cases for hashing. Hashing is commonly used for password storage. When you create an account on a website, your password isn't stored in plain text. Instead, it's hashed adding a layer of security. This way, even if a database is compromised, hackers won't have direct access to your passwords. Hashing is also used to check data integrity. For example, file checksums use hashing to verify that a file hasn't been corrupted. So these are the use cases for hashing. Now moving on, hashing as a general practice adheres to certain principles that define its characteristics. Number one is deterministic output. A consistent input should always yield a predictable output, ensuring reliability in hash generation. Next is irreversibility. Once hashed, it should be computationally infeasible to reverse the process and retrieve the original input, enhancing security. And then comes uniqueness. Distinct inputs must result in distinct hash values, preventing collisions with different inputs produce the same hash. And then comes sensitivity to input changes. Even a minor modification in the input should lead to a substantial change in the hash, maintaining the integrity of the hashing process. And now, a hash algorithm serving as the mechanism for hashing functions to transform data of varying sizes into fixed size data. It yields hash values hash codes or hash sums as outcome and various hashing algorithms have been utilized in computing with some becoming obsolete over time. Some examples are MD4 that is created by Ronald Drivest in 1990. MD4 has a 128-bit length but faces security criticisms including concerns raised by its own creator and then comes SHA algorithm that is developed by the National Security Agency. SHA has a 160-bit length due to security vulnerabilities, organizations now prefer to robust SHA-2 that is 256 256-bit algorithm for cryptographic purposes. And then comes RIP-EMD that is designed by Hans Dobertin with a 160-bit length. RIPMD was created within the framework of the EU project RIPE. And then comes Whirlpool algorithm that is convinced by Vincent Reisman and Paul Barreto and this 2020 156-bit algorithm produces a 512-bit message digest and then we have Tiger algorithm that is recognized for its speed and efficiency 
टाइगर हैशेस और 132 मिलियन बिट्स पर सेकंड सरपासिंग अदर डिस्कस्ड एल्गोरिथम इट स्टैंड्स आउट फॉर इट्स अनरिस्ट्रिक्टेड यूजेज डिवॉइड ऑफ एनी पेटेंट्स सो दिस वाज अबाउट हैशिंग एंड नाउ वी विल मूव टू एनक्रिप्शन सो अनलाइक हैशिंग एनक्रिप्शन इज अ टू वे प्रोसेस इट यूजेस एल्गोरिथम्स टू ट्रांसफॉर्म डेटा इनटू अ फॉर्मेट दैट इज अनरीडेबल विदाउट द एप्रोप्रिएट डिक्रिप्शन की The main goal of encryption is to protect the confidentiality of data, ensuring that unauthorized parties can't access or understand it. And now we'll see the use cases of encryption. Encryption is used in various scenarios. When you send sensitive information over the internet, like credit card details or personal messages, encryption ensures that even if intercepted, the data is meaningless without the proper decryption key. It's also widely used in securing communications such as HTTPS for secure browsing. Additionally, encrypted storage protects data on your devices from unauthorized access. And there are a number of encryption systems where an asymmetric encryption is also known as public key encryption. Symmetric encryption and hybrid encryption are the most common. So symmetric encryption it uses the same secret key to encrypt and decrypt the message. The secret key can be a word a number or a string of random letters both the sender and the receiver should have the key it is the oldest technique of encryption and then comes asymmetric encryption it deploys two keys a public key known by everyone and a private key known only by the receiver the public key is used to encrypt the message and a private key is used to decrypt it asymmetric encryption is little slower than symmetric encryption and consumes more processing power when encrypting data and then comes hybrid encryption it is a process of encryption that blends both symmetric and asymmetric encryption it takes advantage of the strengths of the two encryptions and minimizes their weaknesses and now we'll see the purpose of encryption the main idea of encryption is to protect data from an unauthorized person who wants to read or get information from a message that was not intended for them Encryption enhances security when sending messages through the internet or through any given network. The following are the key elements of security that encryption helps to enhance. Number 1 is confidentiality. Encrypted message cannot be read or changed by another person. Encrypt. It transforms data in such a way that only specific individuals can transform the message. Granular access control. users are limited to what they can see and do it makes auditing for accountability easy in the case of message leak it is easy to trace who did that and when the security breaches can be sorted out effectively then authentication the origin of the message received can be traced thus facilitating authentication and some of the most popular encryption algorithms are aes and pgp AES is a symmetric encryption algorithm while PGP is an example of an asymmetric encryption algorithm used today. And now coming to difference between encryption and hashing. Encryption encodes data to maintain confidentiality and security requiring a private key for reversible decryption. And hashing ensures content integrity by detecting modifications and altering the hash output. Encryption involves a two-way process, encryption and decryption. while well, hashing is a one way process producing an irreversible unique digest both hashing and encryption plays vital roles in handling data messages and information in computing systems they transform data into different formats but encryption is reversible whereas hashing is not now talking about the length output so encryption has variable length and hashing has fixed length and about the types so encryption has asymmetric symmetric and hybrid types and hashing as hashing types and now talking about the common algorithms so encryption has aes rc4 des rsa ec dsa and hashing as sha1 sha2 md5 crc32 and whirlpool so this was about the difference between encryption and hashing and now continuous advancements are crucial to adapt to evolving attack strategies emphasizing the need for up to date hashing and encryption methods and staying current with the latest techniques is imperative to enhance security in modern computing systems and adopting contemporary methods ensures resilience against ever changing threats and maintains robust data protection so this was all for this tutorial 
Hope you guys found it informative and helpful. If you like this session, then like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, then you can drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.